Schizophrenia is one of the most common mental illnesses affecting between 1 and 2% of the population, a figure that has remained constant for thousands of years. Schizophrenia is pretty common across all cultures and time periods. To put this in perspective, you are twice as likely to develop schizophrenia as you are to develop Alzheimer's. You are six times more likely to develop schizophrenia than you are to have insulin-dependent diabetes. Schizophrenia is also 20 times more prevalent than autism. Not only is schizophrenia very common, it comes with tons of different disadvantages. Schizophrenics are more likely to engage in self-mutilation and are 20 times more likely to commit suicide than the general population. Depending on what constitutes a suicide, whether it's assisted or successful, it's between 13 and 55% of all schizophrenics commit suicide. In comparison, the rate for the general population is 14 out of 100,000 people. So based on the information that we have looked at, schizophrenia is a very unfortunate, disadvantageous, and potentially deadly mental illness. So why hasn't evolution through thousands of years weeded it out? In order to understand this, this video is going to be broken up into four different parts. Part 1, what is schizophrenia? Part 2, the advantages of religion. Part 3, schizophrenia and religion. And finally, we'll end with a conclusion. Schizophrenia most commonly develops around the age 20 in between, I think it's about 17 and 25. If you made it into your 30s without schizophrenia, your chances decrease dramatically. Schizophrenics have an array of symptoms all involving abnormal social and mental behavior. Schizophrenics have a hard time understanding associations between different concepts and engaging in abstract thinking. Most infamously, schizophrenics are known to develop auditory and visual hallucinations and have long periods of long and repeated periods of psychosis. So there's a lot about schizophrenia that's unknown and being someone who studied chemistry and the brain and stuff, it's really interesting the chemistry behind schizophrenia. So I want to touch on that in just a few sentences before we move on to other things. So the most accepted theory for what happens at the chemical level is the dopamine pathway theory. Stated simply, some areas of the brain excrete excess amounts of dopamine and activate those brain regions even more. Hyperactivation in these regions is what causes auditory and visual hallucinations, hearing voices, and seeing things that aren't really there. Schizophrenia also has a major underlying genetic foundation. If you are born of a schizophrenic, your chances of acquiring the mental illness increases by 13 times. So we all have that voice inside of our head that helps us think about certain things, helps us communicate, it even helps us remember things. However, for schizophrenics, they will hear not just one voice, but many voices telling them to do certain things, such as stop taking their medication, to hurt other people, or even to kill themselves. It's clear that schizophrenia represents an unfortunate malfunction of some of our most distinguishing features as humans, yet evolution has kept it around at such a high rate for such a long time. So my theory is that schizophrenia's prevalence and long-term prevalence can be explained due to its religious implications. So let's first talk about the advantages that religion affords an organism that participates in it. Going back far into human history, we can already start to see the advantages of religion in some of the most important figures to have ever existed, and those are shamans. Shamans were known to both voluntarily induce and involuntarily experience both auditory and visual hallucinations. They were oftentimes picked to be shamans because they had a long history in their youth of these hallucinations and psychotic episodes that would take them to these foreign worlds. Shamans would oftentimes come back with new medical treatments, new knowledge to just provide with the world, new stories to tell to the people. And as a result, shamans quickly gained positions of prominence in their societies. Due to their psychotic episodes, shamans were successful both from a biological and a societal perspective. They were the only ones in their societies that were really allowed to have more than one wife. It was kind of frowned upon to have multiple partners, but for shamans, it was okay. Shamans being very influential individuals, when the time came to establish somebody in a position of power, shamans were the first people considered. So fast forward to our earliest civilizations that are beginning to write down and record their experiences we see these exact same themes. Those who are in contact with God or gods, in other words, they're having auditory hallucinations and seeing different things. These are the people who acquire positions of prominence, 
have multiple wives, have stories written about their experiences, and are sometimes even kings. So I think one of the best ways to understand how religion has impacted schizophrenia is looking at different religions and looking at different examples of how this happened. First, let's begin with Christianity, the story of how celibate schizophrenics made psychosis advantageous. Individuals like Peter, John, Jesus, Moses, and perhaps most famously Paul all had experience with auditory and visual hallucinations. Their intriguing stories were written down and the things that they learned from their experiences have been passed on for thousands of years. But what's crazy about it is that none of those individuals had any significant biological impact on schizophrenia. So if they did have schizophrenia, they didn't have enough children in order to really make a significant impact in the prevalence of it in the gene pool of humanity. However, what they did was paved a route for future schizophrenics to find solace and success even within the church. Hearing voices within the walls of a church were not only accepted, but in some denominations they were expected. Auditory hallucinations, whether they be induced or due to some genetic foundation, became a characteristic of religious experience and symbolized one's own connection with God and the surrounding community. Being a part of the church came with a whole bunch of different advantages, such as more likely to find a spouse, more likely to have a good friend group. You could place your worries and your fears onto a divine being. You have a higher chance of having more kids, decreased suicide rates, better mental health, and even longer lifespans, all of which still apply today. It's possible that in Christianity's case, a group of celibate individuals all experiencing hallucinations open the biological doors to the prevalence of schizophrenia today. The next case study I want to focus on, and as a fun one, is Mormonism. Luckily, when it comes to the early Mormon church, there's a plethora of documents all pointing towards some kind of hallucinations that Joseph Smith was experiencing. Also, what's very interesting is that Joseph Smith's father also experienced similar types of hallucinations suggesting some kind of genetic component to either of their experiences. After the formation of the doctrine of Mormonism, we really start to see how it affects schizophrenia at a more biological level than Christianity. Joseph Smith, who's famous for practicing polygamy along with many other Mormons, had up to as many as 40 wives and 10 children. And this was not uncommon for early Mormon influencers. Brigham Young, for example, had 56 kids with 16 different women. In this case, we can see the biological implications of religion, in this case Mormonism, on schizophrenia. These exact people who made these various hallucinations, religion-defining characteristics, are having more children with a higher chance of having these exact same experiences. Religion has been able to accept auditory and visual hallucinations and even use them to vindicate their own doctrine. According to a study published in the Indian Journal of Psychiatry, 99% of schizophrenics are religious. Furthermore, the number one voice heard by all schizophrenics is the voice of Jesus Christ. Religion and schizophrenia are intimately related to each other and one cannot be understood without looking at the other. Thanks for watching this video. I'm really interested in hearing what you have to say about the connections between schizophrenia and religion. There's a lot of different theories being tossed around and I haven't found a very good one. And so in a way I kind of made my own. And so I want to hear what other people think about it so I can polish it and make it a little bit better. Thanks again for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you on the next one.